We're going to go next to Ray. He has a question about USA Freedom. Ray, you're on the line with Senator Lee. Hello, Ray. Hi, uh, Senator. Thank you for your service to this great state. My question is about the bulk metadata collection. This collection was a collection of large volumes of phone numbers and an analysis of any suspicious patterns or overseas calls. When you cancel this and an incident like San Bernardino happens, you only ask for data after the fact rather than getting a pattern. Aren't you, by this, risking the, our security? given that metadata never asked for names and the fact that eternal vigilance is a price of liberty? Okay, Ray, we, we have a bad connection. I didn't hear everything you said. I think I heard most of what you said and I think I basically understand your question. I think you're asking me about the USA Freedom Act and whether or not the USA Freedom Act undermines our security. Is that right? Okay, perhaps we, we lost the connection, but let me, let me answer the question. Uh, the USA Freedom Act does nothing to make the American people less secure. Uh, importantly, uh, President Obama a few years ago appointed an independent commission to study uh, the gathering of telephone metadata, uh, among other things. It reached a number of conclusions. And among the conclusions that they reached was that something like what became the USA Freedom Act, which I introduced, uh, could sufficiently safeguard the, America's pe the American people's privacy interests and their security interests. One of the conclusions it reached, w with which I agree, is that we ought not consider our privacy to be fundamentally at odds with our security. To the contrary, our security and our privacy are part of the same thing. In other words, our, our privacy is part of our security. We have to remember that bad things happen when we leave unlimited power in the hands of government officials with no oversight. Among other things, this commission uh, looked back on and uh, cited the report put out by a commission led by Senator Frank Church in the 1970s. That commission studied, among other things, abuses of our intelligence gathering networks within the federal government and concluded that those networks within the federal government had been used in every administration uh, from FDR through Richard Nixon for purposes of engaging in political espionage. This is of real concern to us and one of the reasons why we need to keep a tight watch on it. I was also concerned that uh, with the federal government gathering this bulk metadata, in other words, gathering information on all of your records. Everyone listening to us had their, their phone records gathered. The government was collecting information on who you called, who called you, when they called, or when you called, and how long you talked. That's none of the federal government's business. They have no business collecting all that information, unless, of course, it's connected somehow to an investigation on crime or terrorism or something else like that. And that's a real problem. It's at odds with the spirit, if not also the letter, of the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. It's also a waste of time and effort and resources. So uh, I teamed up with Pat Leahy, who is a liberal Democratic senator from Vermont. Now, Pat Leahy is a liberal Democrat, uh, and I don't agree on everything. But we do agree on a number of things, including the fact that we have to honor, uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, including and especially provisions like the Fourth Amendment, which were being flouted uh, by Section 215 of the Patriot Act in connection with the collection and processing and storage for five years of, at a time of bulk telephone metadata. And so, Ray, I, uh, again, I had the opportunity today to ask these very questions to FBI Director James Comey at a hearing of the Senate Judiciary Committee on which I sit. I asked him, uh, is there any sense in which the passage of the USA Freedom Act could be blamed for the San Bernardino attacks. He confirmed absolutely not, certainly not. There's no connection whatsoever. I asked him if in any way this impaired our ability to follow up on that investigation. And he said, there's nothing in there that impedes our ability to follow up on it. We have all the authority we need to follow up on that investigation, to carry out a full, robust investigation of that act. We have what we need in the USA Freedom Act, and it, in, in fact, strikes an appropriate balance 
uh, between privacy and security, recognizing that ultimately our privacy is part of our security. Now it's interesting, Ray, the, the USA Freedom Act uh, hasn't gotten a lot of attention for the last few months since it was passed into law uh, in June and signed into law by the President. It's all of a sudden starting to get more attention in part of because of the terrorist attacks in Paris and then in San Bernardino. It's also starting to get more attention because a couple of presidential candidates have chosen to bring it up in, in part to inflame the fears of some of the American people. But I want to point out that the arguments being made uh, against the USA Freedom Act are not based in fact. In fact, they're utterly contrary to fact. I'm trying to set the record straight on that because things that are being said about it are not true. Among other things, I've heard some of our presidential candidates claiming that it weakens our ability to investigate uh, foreign aggressors who are bent on carrying out acts of terror on the homeland. That argument is utterly false, and it ignores the fact that the USA Freedom Act doesn't operate at all with respect to foreign communications. Phone calls either originating outside the United States or originating inside the United States directed outside the United States. So that argument is completely false. Some have also said that it somehow impairs our ability to follow up on an attack after it occurs. Again, that's not true because the government still has the ability to go and get a court order authorizing the release of telephone data connected to an actual terrorist investigation. So these arguments are false and they should be dismissed as such. Uh, the USA Freedom Act makes the American people freer. It protects the American people's privacy interests. It also incidentally makes us safer. It expands some of the powers that were necessary in order for us to follow terrorists who come into this country. It gives us at least a 72 hour window in which to follow the terrorists once they arrive in the United States before we can um, uh, figure out a more permanent way of monitoring them while they're in this country visiting from outside the United States. So thank you for asking this question, Ray, but the USA Freedom Act makes us safer and it also protects our Fourth Amendment and privacy rights.